Hello and welcome to another trades training video. I'm Joe Carswell and this is another lesson in our plate layout series. In this lesson, you're going to learn how to lay out a set of plates for an eight foot wall that includes a rough opening and wall connections. So let's get to it. There's a lot of steps when we're wall framing. One of the first and most important is laying out the plates. We have a lot of different things that happen in our walls, whether it's rough openings for doors or windows, walls that need to be connected, we have corners to deal with, and the first part of that process is plate layout. And the person that does the plate layout is very important. They have to understand that process of that pattern of layout, and they also have to be able to read plans and understand specific locations for things like doors and windows, that kind of stuff. And it, it's, if this doesn't go well, then nothing goes well after that. So accuracy here is really important. So I'm going to work you through this step by step. We're going to go through this. And when we're done, we're going to have a couple of boards that have a whole lot of marks on it, but hopefully it'll make sense to you. To start with, let's bring up an image of what we're building so we get a good idea. This is a visual of the item or wall panel that we're trying to build. You see a rough opening for a window that's placed in the wall in a specific place. You also see a T-wall connection. This is where a wall, an interior wall, will come in and make a perpendicular connection to this particular wall. You'll see a nailer on either end of the wall. That's because this is a through wall and this will be what we call an energy efficient or California corner. And that's what needs to be in place on this through wall to give us that interior nailing surface. So to start with the plates, my setup here are two boards laid face up. I've marked them for uh, clarity here as my top plate and my bottom plate. And I've fastened them together. Typically, you will mark these boards at the same time. And it will happen with some simple tools. You'll have a speed square, you'll have a tape measure, and you'll have something to mark with. That's all you need to do this. That in your brain, and we're ready to go. My first concern is finding the placement of that window. Our plants call that out at 39 and a half inches to the center line of that window. That's very common on the plans to call out the center. We just need to find either end of that center line to find the width of our rough opening. I'll go ahead and make a mark at 39 and a half inches on my plate, only my bottom plate. So I go to 39 and a half, I'll make a mark. That is the center line of our window. And what I need to do from there is look and see what size is the window. This window is spelled out on our plans or on that drawing as a 24 by 36 window. That's a 2030 window. That means that the width is 24 inches. So half of that 24 inches would be 12 inches. So if I measure 12 inches from the center line to either side, that will create my rough opening width. So I have one edge here, and then I'll have one edge here. And that makes, or that will define my rough opening. I'll go ahead and draw these lines in because we know that our jack studs are the innermost parts of our rough opening that need to be aligned on those marks. These might be the most important marks on this board, because if they're not placed right, then our window is not in the right place. So that brings me to this next idea that our jack studs need to fall right here on these spots. You noticed, hopefully, that I did not carry these lines up to our top plate. This is a good time to talk about that because uh, our top plate or our jack studs do not continue all the way up to our top plate. If you look at this wall panel here, you can see from this model that we have two rough openings. If you identify your jack studs, you see that they make contact with our bottom plate, but they don't make contact with our top plate. To put these marks on the top plate would become confusing for the person that was assembling this wall, so we will only mark our jacks on our bottom plates. So now it's time to mark our jack studs, and we'll go ahead and mark those with a J. And we have to remember this is a rough opening. Jacks are on the outside. So I'll go ahead and put my J there. Oops, I've been, I'm trying to do this backwards for the camera. My J is wrong, so let's do that the right way. So my J's, uh, from your view, should look like that. Th that's my jack stud, that's my jack stud. 
And now we need to mark for our king studs. So we know that this jack stud on either end will be our inch and a half thick two by four. So we need to find this mark to align on this side and on the other side as well. This is where our speed square comes in handy. I don't need to pull out my tape measure here. I can go ahead and use these rulers that are built into this speed square, line them up on my mark here at, at an inch and a half, and go ahead and mark this line. This line carries all the way up, and this is where my king stud would go. And uh, let's see if I can get my king stud right. Oh, I did it so well yesterday without even thinking about it. Oh, that is not the right way to do a king according to you. That would be the right way to see a king stud mark from your viewpoint. So I'll put a king stud mark on both of these. That means this king travels from my top plate down to my bottom plate. And I'll do the same over on this side. Remember, your king stud is no more, is, um, is just the same length as your common studs. So I'll go ahead, I have to look and make sure, this is very difficult for me to do. So I have my king stud that travels all the way up from my bottom plate to my top plate. And this creates the parts that I need for the structure of my rough opening. Our header will travel from the inside of this king to the inside of this king. So at this point, to cut that header, we could actually measure this. This is a really good time to double check all these measurements for the placement and the width of this rough opening. So I'll pull this again to find my 39 and a half to my center line. We'll check to make sure that we have 12 inches to this side, and then we'll measure the entire rough opening inside of our jacks to get our 24 inches. So according to our plans, this is all where we need it to be. Now it's time to worry about the next feature of the wall that has nothing to do with our layout. That's our T-wall connection. And we have a T-wall connection or a two by four wall that wants to come right into this wall at 24 and three quarters of an inch. That wall will be similar to this and it will come off this bottom plate like that. And we need to make a mark at 24 and three quarters. That is the center line of that wall right there. So we'll mark that as our center line. We need a two by six nailer right here that this wall will be connected to. It will also give us an inch of nailing surface for these inside corners. The way I'll do that is to use that center line mark and my speed square. Half of a two by six is two and three quarters. So a two by six is five and a half. We divide that in a half we get two and three quarters. I need two and three quarters to each side of the center line. So I'll draw that mark. I'll go ahead, draw that line, and then I can drag a line. Whoops. Over to this side. Now we can use our speed square and mark two and three quarters over here. And we can finish that out. That is our two by six. I'll draw an X that marks the spot for the placement of that two by six. Now we need to do it, we need to transfer that same mark onto our top plate here. You have to think about these as uh, clamshells, they'll get folded together. So when these get folded together, all of these marks that we're making should match up or come together. So if I mark it on the outside of here, we need to mark on the outside of here. I'll go ahead and do that really quick. That's one end of our two by six. This is the other end of our two by six. And I'll drag this line across. And that is the placement of our T wall connection. That's our nailer that will travel from the bottom plate all the way up to the top plate. So our main features of this wall are taken care of. They've been marked out. Now we can do this other important step of adding in our layout and how that falls in with all of this other stuff. I'll start from this end of the wall down here and I'll pull a tape measure from this side over here. And this wall will be laid out according to our plans, 16 on center. We'll find our 16, we'll subtract 3 quarters of an inch and make a mark there. I'll go to my next 16 on center mark and I will find that mark and then subtract 3 quarters of an inch, make a mark. I'm going to do this all the way down the board. 
So there's my 48 inches. That's my next 16 on center. And I will subtract three quarters and make a mark. I'm going to shift this down for the camera, which you wouldn't have to do. So when I pull this again, I'm looking for those 16 on center marks. Here's 64. So I will go back three quarters, make a crow's foot. I go to 80 inches. That's my next one. Subtract three quarters, make a crow's foot. And then when I get to the end of the board, I'm down to my end stud configuration down here. So we don't need to worry about that. So now we can mark this wall from one end to the other. If you can do this in a linear fashion, it saves a lot of time. So let's deal with this end of the board down here and get our end studs and our nailer in place. So we needed an, an end stud down here on both plates. So I will make a mark at an inch and a half, carry that all the way across the boards and mark those end studs with an X. Now we need our corner nailers. They will fall on the outsides like our T-wall nailer They'll be turned this direction. You'll have one here and one here. So we need to make those marks. The way I'll do that is I'll find three and a half inches with my ruler. I'll go ahead, pull that line up to an inch and a half, and then I can drag a line over. And that's my two by four. We can do the same up here. I'll find my three and a half inches, make a mark, mark an inch and a half there, and then I can drag a line. Mark an X. So that's what our end stud and corner nailer connections look like. This will create when we put our parts in that energy efficient or California corner. This will also happen on the other end of the wall. I end up here at my first layout mark. This is 16 on center and I'm going to go ahead and draw this line in. This is a common stud. It carries from my bottom plate to my top plate and our placement of our stud to be 16 on center is on this side. So my X goes there and there. I go to my next 16 on center layout mark, and now I am within my rough opening here. That changes what part we put in place, and this will be a cripple or a partial stud that will be placed here, and I'll only draw this on my bottom plate. So I'll go ahead and put, I don't know if I can get a, how do I do my C? I'll draw a C in here. Is that the right way? I think it is, yeah. So that's my uh, cripple. It, it's a partial stud. It does not carry all the way up to the top plate. And I have two of these. Here's my next layout mark. So I'll go ahead, put my line in for that and draw my C. So my layout is continuing. No matter what else is happening in this wall, this regular pattern is happening. Our parts are just changing. When I go to my next layout mark, I end up with a full stud. I'm beyond my rough opening now. I end up with a full stud. Let's go ahead and draw that line in. And I'm back to my X's for a common stud. We have our T-wall here and our next layout mark happens here. So we'll go ahead and draw that in. And I have an X and an X. That tells me that's a full or common stud. Now I'm down on the end here. We'll do the same on this end exactly as we did over there. I'll lay my speed square in here, find an inch and a half, trace that all the way across the boards and place an X there. That's my end studs. Remember, we need these nailers placed sideways in here. I'll do that as well. We need a three and a half inch measurement out to here. We can find our inch and a half here and then drag that line across. That gives me my placement for my Nailer there, we'll do the same here. I'll carry that line over to here. And then I'll drag this line over. That gives me my corner nailers. That's my California corner. And this end matches the other end. Let's do a review of everything that we've just done. So I'll do this using a tape measure for our layout, but let's identify our parts, make sure they're in the right place. We have an end stud here travels from the top plate to the bottom plate, so double marks there. I have my corner nailer. They're on the outside and they're mirrored of each other, so they'll match. Here is my first common stud. Goes from the bottom plate to the top plate. 
right here I'm into my rough opening from my center line I have the inside of my rough opening here my jacks define the inside of that rough opening and I have a king stud on the outside of, of those jacks. The jacks don't continue up to the top plate, but the kings do. We have cripple studs in between those jack studs. And if we pull a tape measure, they land just like this one. They land on a 16 uh, on center mark. Here is 32 and my line is placed three quarters from that 32. And my C is over the mark or the 16 on center mark on uh, 48. I'm three quarters of an inch less with my guideline here and my C is right where it needs to be. Once we get beyond our rough opening here, we have our next full stud or common stud, a mark on the top and bottom plates. Here is my T-wall connection center line. Our two by six nailer is centered on that center line. Here's my next common stud travels from the bottom plate to the top plate. And we get to the end and we have our end studs and our corner nailers on the outside. So there you have it, the whole process of plate layout. If you step back and look at this, there's a lot going on here. It's hard to get this right the first time, but be patient, be focused, and review this video a couple times. This is one of those that you might want to see more than once. So I hope that makes sense. Good luck with this. I'll see you in the next lesson.